I want to talk to you today about the condition of your heart. I'm not talking about your physical heart, although the word picture I want to give you is uh, very similar to your physical heart. When you look at your physical heart, you have uh, several issues that are going on and several things you can do to keep your heart working as efficiently as possible. Especially as you age, you have to watch what you eat, what you put into your body, how much you exercise, because the more you exercise, the healthier your heart is. Because if you're not careful with your heart, plaque can actually build up in your arteries and cause your heart not to work well and even give out. And of course, if your heart gives out, you die. Well, it's the same way spiritually. Uh, God has given us these spiritual hearts. And when we give our lives to Christ, uh, our, our hearts are cleaned out. All the sin that was in our heart is cleaned out and we are left pure before the Lord. But He wants to keep our heart pure. And so what I want to talk about in this video and then the next one coming up that, that I'll uh, put online next week is just some things that God has given us, some tools that He's given us to help keep our spiritual hearts clean and healthy so we can function spiritually the way God designed us to. The issue that we're going to talk about is the whole idea of confession. Because confession is the tool that God has given us, one of many tools, that keeps our heart uh, clean because sin is like plaque. Sin builds up in our heart and if we're not careful, if that sin is unconfessed, our hearts become hard and we become distant from God. And so God says, I'm going to give you a tool called confession. And what confession is going to do is, is it's going to keep your spiritual heart running the way I've designed it to run so it doesn't get clogged down and bogged down with all that sin in your life. And so I want to read you a couple of scriptures today and give you a couple of thoughts about confession and give you a spiritual exercise you can use as you think about confession before the Lord. I want to begin by reading uh, a parable that Jesus told about prayer uh, out of Luke chapter 18 beginning in verse 9. Then Jesus told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. He said two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer, I thank you God that I'm not like other people, cheaters, sinners, adulterers. I'm surely not like that tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give you a tenth of my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, O oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted." This is an interesting story about Jesus because He's talking about heart conditions and He's talking about what can purify your heart before God. The problem with the Pharisee was pride. And pride is, is cholesterol to the soul. It will, it will build plaque up in your spiritual heart. It will shut your spiritual heart down. It will alienate you from God. You become self-righteous. You become judgmental. Pride is just an enemy it's an enemy of a soft spiritual heart toward God. And so God told this story and said, you got to get rid of your pride and I want you to come to me uh, like that, like that uh, tax collector came to me where you are ready to confess and say, oh God, I am a sinner, have mercy on me. And sometimes when we look at confession, we're like, I, I don't understand what the big deal is. The big deal is, is confession is going to get that sin out. It's going to get it out of your heart so you can remain pure and soft toward God. And so God says, what I want you to do on a regular basis is I want you to confess your sins to me. I want you to come to me, uh, share with me what you have done, ask for my mercy and grace. He says, I will always forgive you your sins, but I want you to go through the hard work of coming to me and confessing that sin so that I can, I can take those sins and I can keep that heart pure. Let me give you an example. David, if you'll remember King David, committed the sin of adultery with Bathsheba. And uh, in order to cover up that sin, he had Uriah, her husband, murdered. So here is David, the king of Israel, who has had sex outside of marriage, got her pregnant, and got her husband killed. He has a lot of issues going on in his heart that has made it hard. He has a, he has a clogged up heart. 
And so what he needs to do is confess. And so God sent Nathan the prophet to confront David in his sin so that David could confess that sin and get it out and have his heart softened before the Lord again. And so here's David's prayer of confession out of Psalm 51. And Psalm 51 is one of those great psalms that you need to keep tagged in your Bible and you need to read on a fairly regular basis because this is a great example of a prayer of confession. Here's what Psalm 51 says, verse 1, Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassion, blot out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned, O Lord. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. Did you hear what he said? Your judgment against me is just. I deserve to be judged for my sin. Lord, I'm asking you to have mercy on me. I'm asking you to cleanse my heart. He goes on in verse 7, Purify me from my sins and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. And then in verse 10 he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. And so David gives us this beautiful illustration of what it looks like to confess. I come before the Lord and I get rid of the pride and I humble myself before Him. And I just say, Lord, here is my sin. Here it is. Purify my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Cleanse out that heart. Keep it pure and holy before you, Lord. That is my desire. And that's the purpose of the prayer of confession. And confession is a huge part of a healthy prayer life. So I want to close out today by giving you an exercise called the prayer of examine. The prayer of examine uh, can be at the end of your day preferably, but if you want to do it in the morning, you would look at your previous day. But it's a time to just take your whole day before the Lord and give it to Him and say, okay, Lord, here is my day. Now let's walk through it together. You're inviting the Holy Spirit to walk with you through your day. And you're going to say, Holy Spirit, now show me what you want to show me about my day so I can uh, confess the things I need to confess and keep my heart pure before you. So there's four parts of the prayer of examine, examining ourselves, that I want to share with you. Uh, number one is replay. Replay. What I mean by replay is, is I, I want to ask you at the end of every day, and I'm not talking about 15 minutes, I'm talking about taking five minutes and just saying, okay, Lord, I want to look at the details of my day. And I just want to replay them with you. Holy Spirit, stand with me and let's just replay my day. Who did I talk to? Uh, who did I have contact with? Who were my meetings with? Uh, what was my attitude toward my wife and my kids? What was my attitude toward my coworkers? What were my motives? What were my thoughts? Did I look at something I shouldn't have looked at? Did I listen to or participate in a conversation I should not have participated in? I just want to, I just want to review my day with the Holy Spirit, and I want to look at what I did. And then number two, I want to rejoice. I want to rejoice over the things I did well. Boy, over here at, at, at dinner, I really engaged my kids well. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you that I had that conversation with my kids. And in this business meeting, I represented you well, and, and I, was, I was honest and I was full of integrity. Thank you, Lord. I want to rejoice over that obedience today. And, and you know what? I didn't. I, I don't remember looking at anything that, that I would regret looking at. And so it's been a victory today. I want to rejoice over the victories of my faithfulness for today. And Holy Spirit, thank you. But Holy Spirit, show me, bring to my mind the things that I have done that I need to repent of. See, that's number three, is, is I'm, I'm rejoicing and then I'm repenting. Where, where did I not do well? Lord, where, where did I not? Maybe it was a, a harsh comment I made to my wife that she didn't deserve. Maybe, maybe I was short with my kids or just didn't listen to them. Or, or, or maybe uh, I said something negative behind a co-worker's back that I wouldn't have said. Or, or maybe I had this tinge of jealousy because someone in the office uh, got the promotion or got the sale that I wanted and I'm jealous of them because that's where I wanted to be. And so I just want to examine my heart. See, it's the prayer of examine. I want to take the Holy Spirit through my day and I want to review my day and I want to rejoice on those things I do well. I, I just want to stop and repent for the things I didn't do well. Lord, I'm sorry for 
the way I treated my wife or the way I ignored my kids, for the jealousy I had toward my coworker, maybe for, for a, a conversation I participated in where I said something that was inappropriate. Lord, I'm sorry for those things and I repent. See, that is, that is the exercise that keeps the heart pure, that keeps the heart strong. And then finally, I reboot. I just close my prayer out and say, okay, Lord, I've reviewed my day. I've rejoiced where I needed to rejoice. You've showed me some things maybe that I was even unaware of that I just need to repent for and confess those to you and get those out and ask you to forgive me and keep that heart pure. Now, I want to reboot tomorrow and I want to do better tomorrow than I did today. And so, Holy Spirit, be with me tomorrow. Live with me tomorrow. Walk with me tomorrow, Lord, as I as I live out my faith for you. I want, I want to encourage you to practice confession. It keeps your heart pure and clean before the Lord. And in practicing confession, I want to ask you to take two weeks, take 14 days, and do the prayer of examine every day, just five minutes at the end of your day. You can crawl in bed before you go to sleep, or you can, you can sit in a chair and just spend that five minutes with the Holy Spirit and review your day and rejoice and repent and reboot. And if you'll do that for 14 days, I think you will begin to see a difference in your heart and in your intimacy with God and in your prayer life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful exercise that you've given us from the past that is such an incredible exercise in helping us keep our heart pure and clean. Lord, I pray for everyone that has listened to this um, this teaching today that has watched this video. And Lord, I just pray that you will um, cleanse their hearts and help them keep their hearts pure. Humble them. Help them to practice the discipline of confession, Lord, so that all of our hearts can be in that condition that you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in today and have a great day.